states of the mind and movement of sexual energy. Someone asked, what are the states of mind that cause the sexual energy to move downwards and also what are the states of the mind that render the sexual energy to move upward. Life can be seen in two aspects. Life has two aspects. First is material and the other is spiritual. So too, sex can be visualized in two ways. First is the biological aspect of the sexual energy that is connected with your body and the cells. The other is the energy aspect which is connected to the being, to the mind and consciousness. Being operates through the mind and consciousness. As a result, it is important to understand these two words. The first is biological, which is connected with the body cells. It is through the body cells that one obtains to the body. These cells are part of the body. Biological aspect of this energy we can see in everybody's eyes. If we call it sexual energy or anything that makes no difference. However, there is an another aspect which is connected with it and that is the energy aspect which is connected with the being. Now you look at it how these two are related to one another the biological aspect and the energy aspect. You look at the piece of magnet. It is a piece of iron, a bar, which is clearly visible. Everyone can see it. However, there is something around it which is invisible that surrounds the magnet and that is called the magnetic field. And this magnetic field is not visible to us. We can see only its effects. If we put an ordinary piece of iron within close to this magnet, the magnetic field will pull that piece of iron towards it. There is a field and this magnetic energy works within that field. Field means a radius within which it works. It may happen that this piece of iron, the bar magnet, the piece of iron may lose its magnetic force, magnetic field. Still it will remain the piece of iron. Neither there will be difference in its weight nor its constitution. But there will be a basic change that the magnetic force has vanished. That force that has the capability to attract other metals towards it is no more there. So too your soul or being has a field which is something like magnetic field. Body is visible, but we can see only the effects of the beam. Just as we can see the effect of the magnet, this is a ground, we are seeing it, but the earth is constantly pulling us towards it and we cannot see that force. If we leave this earth, then even for a moment we cannot stay on this earth. 
The magnetic pull of the earth is called by a specific term gravitational force. It is the gravitational force that keeps us pulling towards the ground. The astronauts who are traveling in this space, the most important difficult thing that happens to them that they have to practice for it. When they cross the gravitational force of the earth, which is about 200 miles up in the space, then the gravitational force of the earth vanishes. Then like balloons they start floating in the space. If the seat belt ties them to the chair are released, they will become like a gas balloon. The moment it is released, it goes and it sticks to the ceiling. Because of the ceiling, it cannot go up in the open space, up in the air. If you release the same gas balloon outside in the open, it will continue to move up and up until all the gas is finished. Then it will fall down. So too, because of the space shuttle or the space ship, when the gravitational pull of the earth is no more effective, the astronauts begin to float in the atmosphere within the space shuttle like a balloon. So too, the earth continuously pulls us towards it and we are not aware of it. Because the force that pulls us and keeps us bound to the earth is not visible. That which is seen is the earth and that which is not seen is the gravitational force. So too, that which is seen is the body and that which remains invisible is manas and our soul. In the same way, along with sex, these two aspects are important to understand and that will help you to understand how does, under what states of mind, the sexual energy moves downward and under what states of mind it moves upward. That which is visible is the cells of the body. That which is not visible or remains hidden is sexual energy. If you do not understand this basic fact, truth, then you will not be able to understand this existential bioenergy. In the East, in India, many experiments have been done on this aspect of life. The history is more than 5000 years old or even older than this because the Indus Valley, Valley civilization that explains that there are sculptures that explain that this concept, this understanding was highly developed. Those sculptures are more than 7000 years old. So for such a long period of time, the country its inhabitants have been working on sex energy and they have done unique experiments. But we mistake in understanding them. The moment we talk about sexual energy, we relate it to biological energy. Biological energy or biological aspect of this energy is when one engages in the act of love making, 
what actually happens is the biological aspect of it. The sages and the saints have said that the sexual energy can move upward. There are two aspects. Number one, if we use the scientific term X chromosomes and Y chromosomes, they remain right there where they are, but the energy begins its upward movement. During the state of upward movement, the X and Y chromosomes do not move. What moves upward is the energy field. You will not see the semen particles or the X or Y chromosomes moving upward. The energy, the sexual energy that we speak of moving upward is not connected with X and Y chromosomes that have the physical existence. When you enter into a sex relation, then there are certain biological elements that leave the body. And with those, the sex energy goes out of the body and it dissolves in the outer space. And these biological elements move on a search for a new body. The X chromosomes, when they are released, they can move, begin the journey to merge with Y chromosomes and with the merger of X and Y chromosomes, a new body is formed. And this is what happens during the act of love making, during the act of sex, during the act. Two things happen. One is biological, that is movement, release of the X and Y chromosomes. And the other is psychic. So the first thing that happens, happens biologically. That which biologist understands, release of X and Y chromosomes. We call this, in case of male, we call it semen or X chromosomes. And these particles move in search of their opposite, their complementary elements so that new life, a new body can begin. And there is another thing happens simultaneously, that which is sought, researched, searched by the yogis. And with that act, the energy is also released from the mind and that dissolves into the infinite zero. There are ways and means to allow this energy to move upward. When we talk about the movement of the sexual energy upward, never think it is the movement of X and Y chromosomes upward. There is no passage for these biological particles to move upward. There is no way for these to reach to the thousand petal center or any other. That which moves upward, that which begins its upward ascent is energy. That is the magnetic force that moves upwards. And when this force, this energy is released from the mind, then the X and Y chromosomes become active. 
when a child is born male or female born complete aspect of this sex all the the cells the x and y chromosomes that are needed the child is born with that no new particle is added a female child is born with 300000 capability of 300000 cells or eggs so when a child is born it has the capability to produce those 300000 eggs out of these not more than 200 eggs get ready to reach the fertilization and out of these 10 at the most 10 or 12 or maximum 20 become active and they enter into the process of creating new life up to the age of 13 or 14 the child male or female remains unaware of this process that this capability is hidden deep within its biology and psychology the entire body is ready for this but the sexual energy does not reach the cells at the age of 13 or 14 when the mind is fully developed then the sexual energy begins to move downwards the moment mind gives the instructions the sex centers or instruments become active there can be a reverse process as well at the age of 45 and 50 the material that was available that is in the form of eggs that comes to an end the biological aspect of sex comes to an end but the mental the energy that is being released from the mind will continue to have its downward movement that is why even a lady at the age of 70 can become sexually aroused because you are thinking mentally you are in that environment you are looking at the photographs videos that activate the sexual energy at the level of the mind and because of that the person can become very sexual although there is no need for biological sex or the biological sex has become meaningless now the biological sex is over before the age of 13 or 14 it remains ineffective and after the age of 70 80 or 90 this becomes ineffective but even when a male person attains the age of 90 the sexual energy can be released from his mind level and will begin to reach the lower levels to the biological aspect and it is this energy which is released from the mind continues to trouble the man although the body is not capable but the sexual desires continue to dominate the mind and it is continue to move downwards unless and until the instruction comes from the mind or release from the mind the body cells do not get active there is no preparation until the instruction comes from the mind suppose you are going to engage in the act of sex 
but the mind has not released the energy or your mind is troubled by something else, the act cannot be performed. Now the biologist, the researcher at the level of the biology accept this fact that as long as the order or instruction does not come from the mind, the sex instruments do not become active. If we can cut off certain aspects of the mind, then the sex can vanish for life. Or we can give certain hormonal injections so that the mind becomes capable of give sending instructions very early. As a result, a boy of seven years or a girl of five years, his or her sex instruments will become active. So too, if we can give these hormonal injections to a male person at the age of 80, he can cause fertilizations. If we can put egg in the ovary of a female of the age of 90, she will become fertilized because the sex energy is flowing into her. Only the bodily aspect has become ineffective. The sex energy is infinite infinite. That is why we called Mahavir. It comes from the two words. Maha means infinite. Veer means the sex energy. When we use the word Anantvirya, infinite Virya is the word Hindi word that is used for semen. It has two aspects. The biological aspect that is released during the act of love making and the energy aspect which is called ojas, the energy. When I say that the sexual energy is infinite, I mean ojas, like the magnetic field which is not visible to you. You can only see the magnet, but not the magnetic field that surrounds it. So Ojas is the energy field that surrounds around the physical aspect of love. Physical aspect. This infinite energy, Ojas, continues to move downwards. And it moves downward through the instrument of the mind, just as you look at the internet, what is there in the space is infinite. The information that is there is infinite, but it can only be reached to you. It can only be reached to you through the brain that your laptop is. Two things are needed your connection to the internet and the laptop. Through the laptop, all the information that remains invisible to you, your emails and all other information comes to your laptop and you see it. So to this infinite sexual energy or ojas is part of the outer part of the sky, part of the existence, through the instrument of the mind, it comes down because body and mind are not separate existence. Body and mind are one. First it is released from the soul or the being to the mind and from the mind it releases to the body. These are the steps of the movement of this energy. Without the sequence, the being, the source of infinite energy, the mind, the instrument through which it is transformed, 
all that I am speaking to you is part of my being. And if the mind is not functional, that energy cannot reach the mind, form the words, can form the modulation and the process through which it can reach you. The sexual energy that I am talking about, that which yoga and tantra had called sex energy, it has nothing to do with the biological aspect of it. The sex energy can begin its upward movement. So too, if in any elderly person this energy is somehow begins to move upward, the life will become very innocent, just like a child. child is not aware of sexual energy or nudity or pornography but an adult whom the mind is functional and the sex energy begins to move through the mind to the biological level becomes aware of nudity but the child remains innocent about it if the sex energy begins its upward movement in an elderly person or in any person, then his being, his existence will become innocent, like a child. The child is not aware of its innocence. It, he remains unconscious of the innocence which is natural. Why? When the energy begins to move upward, it can happen at any age, then the innocence will descend onto the person. Now that the volcanic eruption that was there under the surface are no more operating. This is here, the energy that is there, it reaches to its source. All the information is there in your laptop about your emails and everything. All you need a flick of a few fingers and through this you can bring down that information at the level when it is visible to you, your emails. You can read them. If somehow or the other it's backward movement, water starts receding or the energy begins to recede that state of being is called innocence and this is the journey of the upward movement of the sexual energy. A master, a saint or sage is on that journey. The sexual energy becomes activated, it remains invisible just like the magnetic force. It remains invisible but through the mind it becomes active. This sex energy, as you know, is the way of the mind. Without the instruction from the mind, it cannot move its downward movement. As I mentioned, if you are going to make or your spouse wants the love making, she is mentally ready. The energy has been released. This we in our common terminology call that the person is sexually aroused. But the other partner may not be sexually aroused because the instructions has not been released from his mind. Mind may be preoccupied because of any other reason. And unless and until the instruction comes from the mind, there can be no fulfillment at the level of the biology. Without the instruction from the mind, the energy cannot move downward. So we can create the states for the mind that this energy stops its downward movement. We can allow this energy to move scantily. Then sex will become meaningless or become less and less important in the life of that person. This is what experiment I have been doing with some of the disciples. I am trying to close those channels or direct them into some other directions that the mind becomes active somewhere else 
and not constantly thinking about sex so that the downward movement will not be there. There are ways and means those who are around me in my company they will realize that I am directing their energy into some other fields and with that they are becoming less and less sexual. Less and less instructions are coming, descending to the level of biology and eventually sex will become meaningless for them. If there is an opportunity or you have chosen your way, then it is okay, there is no problem. But you ask how to change the direction of this energy from downward movement to the upward movement and what are the states of the mind under which it moves downward and what are the states under which it begins to move up.